What I'm gonna do is go ahead and add some short-term fuel trims in here too. It'll allow us to see if we get any correction to the negative, indicating that we have a fix on bank one. And then also if we get any correction to the positive on bank two, indicating that we did move the problem to bank two. So let me go ahead and pull those up. All right, and uh, yeah, it's off scale. Let me go ahead and adjust these scales real quick. Just makes it a little easier to read uh, if one of them changes more than the other. This overrides the auto scaling. So there's our, now they're both on the same scale. There's our short-term fuel trims. Again, bank one will always be in red on everything, so I made it consistent. All right, so let's see if this problem moves. Okay, how interesting is that? We're actually getting correction, it looks like we might, on bank one now. So moving the oxygen sensors had a definitive effect on this. That, that is fascinating. We're now overlapped for the first time exactly on trim. Um, what I'm curious about though is why bank two is not going lean. Um, and this may again be a possible learn thing. Um, let's see what happens with our short term. Huh. Well, that is, that is pretty dramatic. I was really expecting we would see bank two go lean here. So I think what I'm going to do, um, let me go ahead and take this vehicle for a drive and uh, try it under different conditions and we'll see. Um, one of the things I did notice is bank two is still fixed actually now that I think about it. Um, we don't get any reactions there. Let's go ahead and try that propane test before I take it for a drive. All right, so I'm just gonna add some propane right into the intake and let's see if now we get changes. So our fuel trim's down. And again, bank two does not seem to be changing no matter what I do on that long term, which makes me wonder if we do have actually a dual bank problem. You can see we're clearly going rich on the O2 sensors. Bank one still having a lot more variability here. I do not know why bank two will not react here. Um, but it looks like our short terms are identical here. But again, we're really not getting reaction from bank two. All right, now we're moving. We see we get a little more reaction here. It looks like now we might be reproducing our problem on bank one again. That is kind of interesting how uh, it seems like bank two seems pretty static. All right, and now it looks like we are reproducing our original issue by putting um, load on the engine and it does look like we now have this bank one reacting so it looks like swapping the oxygen sensors actually had no effect but we're still but we were still in a kind of a negative thing there let's see if we yeah we're right back up to 10 again which is where we were before so um, I don't know, it looked like we maybe had something there for a second, but uh, I'll bet if I take the car for a drive, we will again see that this increases back up high again to uh, set a bank one code for a lean condition. So swapping the oxygen sensors does not seem to actually have had the effect I wanted after all. That is interesting how I cannot get bank two to respond. Let me see if bank two will respond to a vacuum leak. All right, let's induce a vacuum leak now. And again, I'm going from the brake booster so that it's on both banks. All right, we see we immediately lean out. 
both fuel trims going positive. We're getting a long-term fuel trim response immediately on bank one, bank two quite a bit slower. And this is with the oxygen sensor switched. So I'm not sure what to say about that. Let's put that back on. All right, we can see the quick fuel correction. And we can see the, the quick fuel correction and, and then now a lot less reactivity on bank one again when I give it load. Um, but boy, that, that bank two just seems fixed on that long-term fuel trim, doesn't it? There we go, now we got a little more of that increase to 10. And again, I'm sure that that would show more variability when I'm driving, but uh, all right, well, that's enough data collection there on the swapped O2 sensor. All right, um, that is not nearly what I expected, but uh, based on that information, um, I am actually kind of more inclined to believe that bank two, which of course uh, is showing as normal, is, is really having a slow response on that long-term fuel trim, much more so than I've ever seen on the car. I've, done, I've played with the car an awful lot, trust me, and um, both banks typically respond right away. I've actually shown this in previous videos, as a matter of fact, using the car. Um, but for that slow response on that bank, is pretty disturbing and the fact that it still happens after swapping the O2 sensors is uh, actually even a little more disturbing. I'm certainly not ready to throw a PCM in this thing yet, but um, that that is interesting how the two banks react totally differently. It does make me think that we are off track with this being a bank one specific problem. I think what we've got is two problems. I think we've probably got a problem that is most likely affecting both banks, but because bank two seems to not be very responsive, we're just not seeing that. So, um, I'll probably have to do a little more research on this. I think this actually may be a good point to end the video and put this on and get some more ideas from you guys at this point because this totally didn't turn out the way I was expecting, honestly. So uh, I was expecting to swap the O2 sensors, problem moves to the other bank, problem solved, but not even close. So um, let me know what you guys think and then we'll make a follow-up video and uh, try some more ideas. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you found this fun.